And this is Jay Taft with your weekly sports podcast, Not Just a Game. And this week we have, we're going to have three guests this week. And one of them is Nia Karras, Boylan, soon to be senior uh, swimming star, who anybody who's into swimming has been watching and, and watching closely as she's been qualified for three straight state tournaments, state meets here in a row. Uh, meddled in all of them, right, Nia? Right. Brought back the hardware each time. Um, so thank you for joining us. This is just a good time to get somebody like you on. I've got a lot of things I want to want to hear from you about. Um, but thanks for joining us. I hope you and your whole family, everybody's safe right now. Thanks. You too. Everybody in the Karis family doing good, healthy. Everybody's good. Yeah, everyone's healthy. Okay. Good flashback real quick and just give us a little take on what it's been like for someone like you who's just been anxiously awaiting her senior season um and having to deal with this what we've been dealing with these last few months with the pandemic the lockdown all the question marks surrounding sports in the near future give us a little take of what it's been like for someone like you with a big season coming up what it's been like for you um, so, like, it really sucked not being in the pool for, like, three months. Like, that's Whoa. the longest I've ever been out. And so, it was, like, really hard because, like, if you felt, like, I felt like I had, like, no, like, purpose, basically, because, like, swimming's, like, my, like, life. So, I thought, like, I felt like, oh, like, there's nothing to work towards because I always like to work towards a goal. And I didn't have, like, a goal to work towards. So it sucked, and I didn't know when we were going to start again. And then I got a call from Brian McGuire for Boylan, and he's like, hey, like, you can come practice with us. And I, like, said, okay, that's great because my club team isn't going back because, like, there's, like, issues with, like, our training facility there. Like, they're not letting us practice there. So then he's like, yeah, you can come some with us. So the first time back in the pool was pretty awful because it felt really, like, weird to be back. And everyone was, like, out of like swim shape because like I had kept in shape by like running and lifting but I was out of swim shape because like there's this like weird swimming shape like if you don't swim then you're not going to be able to like go fast so again you've been doing it every day for since yeah. so I really like yeah the <laughs> longest I've ever been out like willingly was for a month because of my shoulder so um yeah it was pretty weird and then I've been like nervously waiting like the answer to like are we going to be able to swim this season and so I was like on my thing yesterday like refreshing and refreshing and refreshing but of course it crashed and so then finally they came out and said we're gonna be able to swim and like it was just like such a happy moment because I want to like be able to have like a regular kind of fall season whether it like be completely normal which it's not going to be or like cut a month short like at least it'll be in the fall. Now, you had told me, I think, earlier that this, you're more mentally prepared this for this season than maybe ever, or at least more so than the past few, um, which makes you even hungrier or wanted even more when you feel ready for it. Give us a take as to why you felt more mentally prepared for this one, and maybe why you were hungrier for this one. Uh, coming up well I've taken some time to like learn some important like lessons and because I used to um like just like I wasn't as mentally tough the last three years so I've learned how to like deal with situations and like people better and so last year was not like one of my it was my worst season ever because I struggled mentally and physically mm -hmm. because I had my shoulder injury a month into the season and I had bicep tendonitis and then I also had like an overuse injury and so then I had to like start doing exercises to try to help that but the doctors basically said the only way I could like completely heal it is if like I took time out of the water like a long time like I think it was like a month and I was like well if I take a month off like it's gonna be the end of the season already and I'm not gonna like swim good so I said that's not an option so I took like a couple of days off and so then I came back and then um like a, I had like a bunch of people like assuming things about me like I was like being lazy or not trying which wasn't the case at all 
So hearing then it, voices were you? What? Hearing different voices yeah, out there. Right? Assumptions <laughs> and people saying things about me. And so then it got to like the sexual me. And that was like my least favorite me ever because I had like a really bad race. Like after my 50 freestyle, I knew. No, wait, did you, didn't you say you had like some form of pneumonia or something? Yeah, so I had, it was at conference where I had like went to the doctor, my asthma specialist. And he's like, well, you have like borderline pneumonia basically, which is like going to go into a form of pneumonia if you don't like do something. So I had to take like my breathing treatments because I have asthma. And so then on top of having pneumonia and then my shoulder, which like it hurts hair. So like I could not like breathe well. And so it like really sucked. And then going into that meet, like I knew I was sick, but I didn't want to like complain to anyone. So really the only ones that like truly knew what was going on was my family. So then when I went there and I swam my 53 and I felt a little bit off because I had gone a 24, which is not my best time at all. And so I felt a little bit off and it wasn't like what I wanted to go. So um, I knew like that I was gonna like have to like basically try like the hardest I've ever tried in my 100 freestyle to win mm -hmm. because I was going up against Ali Cushing, which has been, we've been teammates before and I really respect her and I really like her. She's a nice girl. And so we had, a, so I knew I was swimming against her in the 100 free. So she was gonna be a tough competitor cause she was on fire that day. She had a really good day. So then I went up to for the 100 freestyle and I knew like the only way I was going to be able to try to beat her would be taking the first 50 out as fast as I could, given like my condition. So I like go out, but she ends up catching me in the last 10 yards because I just like didn't have anything left. And then what sucked the most and like literally what still plays in my head every day is when I touched the wall and I knew I lost because I saw her like overtaking me the last 10 yards and I hear like everyone going absolutely insane because I lost like that was literally one of the because they no one really wanted me to win because I've won all the time people just want to see me lose that's how it yeah. happens sometimes that sucks and literally it plays in my head every day and then a lot of things people were saying that day was like I didn't wear a fast skin because like a bunch of the girls will wear fast skins at sectionals mm -hmm. well I wasn't tapered and I didn't have my suit because of my shoulder because the basket digs into my shoulder too much. So I couldn't stand wearing that the whole day. But people wanted to say it's because I thought I was better than everyone else and I was too good. And that's why I didn't wear it, which wasn't the case at all. So it's just really funny that people have to come in and do that. But I, after that race, I like went and threw up and I was like vomiting in the bathroom. Lovely. Like after you had talked to me. So yeah. then I was in there and then I had the 200 freestyle relay coming up. So then I had to suck it up and swim that because I wanted my team to win. And I didn't want to, like, I didn't really feel good at all, but I decided like, you got to do it for your team. So it came, I qualified that. And then the 400 freestyle, we ended up losing and we lost sectionals, but overall, like it was an okay meet for what I was feeling. But then state came and I'm like, well, I had Next to week, it. right? One week later. I was super nervous because, um, literally like everyone was saying like oh she's washed up maybe and like people are coming at me online and saying like I was going nowhere fast and that really hurt like I was like okay I mean it only did the opposite of making me feel bad it just like fired me up to yeah, swim faster yeah. so I proved myself and I went top 12 and proved like I'm not washed up or whatever you want to say so the reason why I'm so motivated this year is because I want to redeem myself in the 100 freestyle and prove everyone wrong that I'm not washed up. I'm just as good. I'm better than I've ever been. So I hope they're all ready for it because they've dug their own grave. So. Ah, yay. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And it's, it's right here. We don't have to wait until next spring. Exactly. Like that would suck waiting another like four months. So I'm ready. And so I hope everyone else is too. I hope so too. Nia Karras from Boylan giving us a little preview of what's to come here in our shortened but yet exciting uh, girls high school swimming and dive season. Nia, good luck this season. Stay healthy and safe and thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Wait. Uh, and we're right back with you with the podcast Not Just a Game and we have our second guest here who is Lutheran soon-to-be senior Lauren Spangler, volleyball player, 
Uh, and Lauren, I know you've been anxiously awaiting word from IHSA on what's what's going to happen with your season, which is generally here in the fall. Um, welcome aboard here on our podcast and give us a take Thank on you. what it's been like here lately for you to kind of wait for that decision and then what it was like to hear it. Well, we were all waiting for it. We were kind of grinding out some practices. We were practicing in masks, doing whatever they were basically asking us to do. Um, really hopeful. I had work yesterday, so I couldn't make it to the meeting. And I was just waiting for the text from my teammates, you know, to see what they were saying. And they sent the picture of the new IHSA rules. And we were all really disappointed. And we're just really hopeful for the spring season now. But it'll be so empty without a fall volleyball team. Right. So and and I'm assuming you have all this prep and it's both it's physical and it's mental preparation that you guys yes. go through. Give me an idea of where you were at mentally over these last few weeks. Did you kind of were you hesitant to let yourself get too excited for a fall season or did you kind of just say all right, let's play it out like we're going to have it? How did you go about I don't really think it's set in fully yet, but I was really hopeful for a season. I just kind of was aware that it was a possibility that they would cancel fall sports. And so I was still preparing, like we would play a fall season, going to practices, working out, you know, being hopeful of a fall season and just basically waiting for an answer because it's just been all up in the air. Every state's been up in the air about all this COVID stuff. So it's been kind of crazy. And it still is, as we know. I mean, everything's yep. fluid. Anything could change at any time. Um, mm -hmm. But for now, it appears as if the IHSA has moved you guys, volleyball, boys soccer, and football from the fall to the spring. Um, and everybody's going to have a little bit of a condensed schedule, but all the sports mm -hmm. at least have a chance to play this school year. Um, yeah which is the hope um do you take any solace any positives out of you gotta wait but you know at least there's still hope and and you've got even more time to kind of let this thing play out um before you have to hit the court yep um more positives honestly for me personally It'll be cool that since I have a job now, I was able to pick one up because of quarantine and COVID. I was able to have some free time, finally get a job and make some money because I'm always in season. And so now it's more time for work, more time to physically prepare and get back in shape, more time to mentally keep growing stronger and maturing, I guess. And same with our juniors and our sophomores. I mean, they'll be older by the time the spring comes around. A whole fall and winter is a long time, so it'll be more mental preparedness. We'll be hungrier, I think, honestly, because waiting to play would be yeah. just, you know, excruciating. We just want to get on the court, but I think there's a lot of positives that can come out of any situation. It just, you have to look at it the right way, and if we just keep a positive take on things, then that's all you can do at this point. It's uncontrollable. And and you talk about hungry. I mean, you guys last season, you rolled through that postseason. Um, and I know you had a lot of comebacks here and there, some exciting yeah. finishes. Um, but you you were dominant a lot of the way as well. Uh, and you got to state, I think that was the first time in program history. Yep. Um, and taking fourth, we know that means – uh, you suffered a couple of losses at the state tournament, which is never easy, um, but you also took fourth in the state. So give me an idea of how how hungry and how motivated you guys must be coming out of that. Well, we always said that for our team, we were the team that was either going to win it all or we were going to lose it all. It was just a mindset that we had. So it was just kind of once we lost the first game, we were shooting for the second, and it was a heartbreaker to lose the second game, but we were all crying in the locker room, coming close together. We were just saying how next year there was no doubt we were going to find a way to make it to state, no matter what it meant. We were going to find a way, and we were going to shoot for first because, I mean, once you're there, now we know. 
it's the first time in history we'd ever been there, but now we know what it was like. We know the thrill of it. We know the adrenaline rushes. We know that when somebody cramps up, somebody else has to pick up the slack. I mean, it was just a new experience all around and coming back a second time or hopefully wanting to go a second time to state this year, we would have been ready and we would have known. So, I mean, I just, I know we're all itching mm. to play a season and just the glory of it. It was a, it was unimaginable. It was awesome. So yeah, we're, we're I'm just hopeful. Watch you guys again. What last question again, Lauren Spangler from Rockford Lutheran Volleyball. Really appreciate you coming on and talking with us. Last question for you. Give me an idea of what, what do you think is going to happen this spring? Do you feel in your gut that um, we're going to maneuver through this stuff and we're going to come out the other end and you guys are going to be back at a, you know, on a postseason run that dreams are made of again? Um. I really hope so. And in my gut, I just kind of feel that if they can cancel fall season, it means that they're hopeful that in the future that it'll die down by the time spring rolls around. Because if you're planning on moving a sport to a different season, you're just hoping that by the time that comes that it'll die down. So I'm hoping that cases will go down. There's no more outbreaks, you know, I mean, or we just become aware of the fact that it's a real thing and that it's going to happen. It's inevitable at this point. People are going to get it, you know. I mean, there's exposure everywhere. Work, outdoors, you just can't really control it. It's a virus, you know. So, I mean, I'm hopeful that we'll move forward with things. We'll find a way to make it possible, no matter what it is. And if it's a shorter season, it means not as much time to prepare, but it not everybody will have the same, everybody will still have the same time to prepare. So everybody will be in the same spot. Nobody will be ahead of the game. Everybody will be moving at the same pace. And I'm hopeful that we'll just pick it up right where we left off and fin find a way to get there again in postseason. Just get back on the court. Yeah. Just get back on the court. And there's still hope. There's, there's, you know, everybody's hoping that that's going to happen. And, We'll see, huh? We'll see. Yeah, yeah. That's all we have right now. <laughs> Just it's to been see. a weird <laughs> couple of months. There's been yeah, a lot of that. It's been insane. How would you? How would you? Uh, what do you think symbolizes these last couple months? What couple of words do you think puts it all in? Honestly, if I could describe this whole time period, we're making history. Mm -hmm. and it's been unreal that's basically all i have to say about it <laughs> i we agree with you yeah. lauren spangler rockford lutheran thank you so much we really appreciate it lauren yes thank you and we're back with the weekly sports podcast not just a game this is jay taft and our third and final guest of this week is North Boone star quarterback Logan Emmanuel. And uh, Logan is hoping to get set for a big senior season as the quarterback over there in North Boone, and it's been a tricky couple of months. Logan, thanks so much for joining us. How are you doing? I take it you're healthy, your family's doing good? Yeah, we're doing good. Uh, thanks for having me out here today. Yeah, you bet. It's been a really weird stretch that everybody has been through here give me a little take on what you've been going through these past three or four months how has it been emotionally for you and what have you been doing to kind of keep yourself ready you know like when this all first started like nobody really knew what to do like we were all just kind of like going by what the like the governor was saying and stuff and just trying to follow the rules and just kind of doing what we can and it was just really weird like the whole time because like nobody nobody's ever been through this kind of thing before we're all new to this and like we didn't have like when baseball got canceled in the spring that's like that was like the first big thing that I was like dang like dang this is like serious yeah and then like school getting shut down for the whole year 
It, it was crazy. I, now, how, how did you and your friends kind of handle things over the past few months, especially when it comes to, well, both physically and mentally? How did you keep yourself going, keep yourself sharp, keep, keep the smile on your face? <laughs> uh, me and my friends, we spent a lot, of, a lot of hours playing video games together at <laughs> late nights like to like 4 a.m. That That's really what, that's like the highlight of my chronification pretty much, just hanging, doing that with them. I tell you, Logan, it seems like I talk to a lot of people and one thing you got to give video games credit for, it has really helped a lot of you guys kind of keep in touch with your buddies. Hasn't yeah, it? it has. It's been yeah, almost, it it's been almost like your only way to hang out with your friends the past few months, hasn't it? Yeah, especially at the beginning. Yeah, definitely. That's all we did. Yeah, and it's lightened up a little bit now, and things are, mm -hmm. you know, our world is, is trying to get back to normal a little bit. Give me an idea of what you've been doing, and you're a multiple uh, sport athlete so you you've been trying to get your baseball thing going um trying to figure out what's been going on with football what's it been like here in the sports world the last you know little phase here but like, um i think early june we started travel baseball so that kind of like helped get like getting out and doing stuff and getting active again we played a couple tournaments and then we we're kind of shut back down now for a couple of weeks but like with football we were able to get after it for about three weeks and after, like now we're obviously shut down again yeah it sucks how how weird was that on thursday i mean i take it pretty much everybody knew the news that the ihsa had handed down its proposal that basically pushed football uh boys soccer and volleyball to the fall um, so give us an idea of what it was like when you guys showed back up Thursday morning, I assume, um, for what you were thinking was going to be another day of camp. And, and I think that was kind of the finale. What, give us a little take on what that day was like. But we all like figured out Wednesday, like this is our last day. And then everyone was like texting in our football group chat, like, is there even going to be camp still? And then I asked our coach and he was like, yeah, we're just going to have one last day just kind of to do it and then like a lot of people were gone on our last day a lot of people were missing hmm. but like yeah it didn't feel like it was everyone knew that it was kind of pointless to be there but everyone that was there still wanted to be there because like we all wanted to play so bad what was your take? Give me, give me the emotions that were r running through your veins when you heard that um, while football was not canceled, they weren't shutting it up, shutting it down. Um, they were going to push it to the spring and hope to get, you know, kind of a, a nice season in then. What, what were the emotions like for you? I was like, I was like kind of thankful at that time yeah. when I heard that we, there's still like a chance that we could play, but there's also still a chance that it could get that could get canceled too because you never know if this thing will spike up more but it sounds like you feel like this is maybe the best chance for you guys mm -hmm. to get as much of a season in as you can for your senior year right yeah for sure because if we tried to play a fall season one school gets like a outbreak there and then the whole season shut down and feel like the spring would be the best option for everybody yeah boy um quite a season for you last year 2,617 yards and 24 TD passes does that sound right to you yeah yeah you probably got them numbers etched in your brain there uh <laughs> I'm assuming that's the target and you're trying to get over that here for the next season of course depending upon how many games you have and mm -hmm. uh how far in the season you guys are able to go give me an idea of what you think um the spring is going to look like and what is it going to look like for north boone vikings football i think that we are going to have a, another playoff run here because i mean we only lost, we lost two 
like Maine senior Cooper Baden and oh, cool. our our uh, one of our linemen Connor Nolan. Mm-hmm. And yeah, those were the two main ones last year that we lost. But everyone else was pretty much a junior last year that played, and we had a sophomore, Will Dutch, probably. Yeah. Yeah, Will's a weapon. Cooper was a big weapon, but you guys seem mm-hmm. to always kind of have somebody else ready to slide right in. Yeah. That passing us. attack is something fun to watch. I tell you. Yeah. We got a uh, – he's gonna. He's my a senior, um, James Lynn. He's been working really hard this offseason. Uh-huh. He's looking to, have a, looking to have a big season this year too. Great. Along with Will. Okay, great. Well, we're really excited to watch. I know we've got to wait a little while, and it's never easy. You have to be patient these days. We've learned that, haven't we, Logan? Yeah, for sure. Um, but as long as we can get there – and get some football in. That's what's important. That's what we're kind of striving for, right? Mm-hmm. Well, good luck. Thank you so much for joining us, Logan. I know people really wanted to hear what you guys are kind of feeling and what you've been going through with all this craziness of late. Um, mm-hmm. So we appreciate it. And, um, you know, keep working at it. Keep keep the right mindset. You've got a great head on your shoulders. And, uh Look forward to watching you in the spring. Thank you. All right, Logan, take care, and thanks again for joining us. Yep, thanks for having me.